Welcome to Bible 180, Haggai. Many previous prophets predicted punishment for Israel regarding her apostasy and rebellion. However, those same prophets had prophesied restoration of God's people. Haggai takes place after Yahweh has exiled and returned many Jews to Jerusalem. At this point, Jerusalem is a lot like a third world country. Haggai's prophecy is primarily about two individuals, Zerubbabel and Joshua. Zerubbabel is the governor or vassal king of Jerusalem, which can barely be called a city. Joshua is the high priest of the temple, which has not yet been built. Haggai proclaims the returning Jews have not actually done right by God, even though they're back in the land. They have made themselves fancy houses, but they've completely neglected to build Yahweh's house. Yahweh asks, haven't you noticed the drought or your crops failing? Why do you think the land is rejecting you? You have been concerned for your own glory and not concerned with my glory or my instructions for that matter. Do you want me to send the covenant curses on you all over again? Zerubbabel and Joshua take these words to heart and they begin a rebuilding project of the temple. Fast forward two months, the temple is started, but it's obviously not anywhere as impressive as the original. Yet Yahweh encouraged them. Yes, it's not as good as it once was. However, what's important is that I promise that I will once more fill this house with glory and the nations will come here to worship me. The book ends with a stern warning. Yahweh asked the priest, if you have consecrated holy sacrifice and you touch it, will that make you holy? The priest answered, no. Then Yahweh asked, if on the other hand, you touch something defiled like a dead body and you touch it, will you become unclean? They answer, yes. Likewise, Yahweh warns them that just because they're part of this rebuilding the temple project, that in and of itself will not make them holy if they are crooked or unjust in their hearts. However, if their lives are nasty and unclean, then whatever they touch will become unholy. Unless the current generation were to humble themselves, act justly, and put God first, that anything this people touches, including a rebuilt temple, will become impure. It's only through true repentance and covenant faithfulness that the building efforts will actually mean God's kingdom is coming about in their midst. Nonetheless, God promises that there will be a reestablished holy priesthood and a faithful ruling king from David's royal line once again. But Haggai doesn't actually answer the question of whether this is taking place in Haggai's day. The promise is it will eventually happen, but are Joshua and Zerubbabel the ones to do it? Will repentance and faith be the beginning and the end of this project as they should be? The only way to find out is to keep reading. We can observe that leadership is important in Haggai. In fact, Haggai highlights the need for God's people to have a good high priest and king. Correction, encouragement, and motivation are also primary purposes of this book. What's most important is that the brick and mortar are not nearly as important as hearts and action. Repentance, faith, and justice are what God really wants from his people.